All right. Are there any children here this morning? Really? There are. All right. Come down the front, kids. Let's sing our kids' time song. Here we read some of the words of Jesus. What did Jesus say? The time has come, he said. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. And Jesus calls on all people from all different backgrounds to come and be part of his family, his team, his kingdom. He says, give up your sins and trust in me. You can be part of my family. And that's what happened this morning with our baptism service. Our friends came along and said publicly before the whole world that they want to follow Jesus. They want to stop being sinners. They want to be saints. They want to be holy, good people. They want to go the way God wants them to go. And because of who Jesus is and what he has done, they can. All right. My question to you this morning is, how do you know what it is that God wants you to do? Where have I put my microphone? Think about that. How do you know what it is God wants you to do? Any ideas? Any thoughts? Hmm. Hmm. Any ideas? What do you think? Say no? No? How about you? Any ideas? No. No? All right. How about you? Any ideas? What do you, how, do you know, how do you know what God wants you to do? Mm. I don't know. All right. There's a couple of things we could do. What could we read to find out what God wants us to do? The Bible. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, we could read the Bible. There's stories in there of people and following God. What about who could we ask about what God wants us to do? Jesus. We could ask Jesus. We could pray to him. Yes, that's very true. What else? Who else could we ask, do you think? Theo. Ask Theo. They're all pointing at Theo. <laughs> Theo knows, don't you, Theo? Very good. We can ask here. We can ask our brothers and sisters, hey, I think God's calling me to do this. What do you think? Today when you go out to Sunday school, you're, going to hear, you're hearing the story of Gideon. You heard some of that last week. Gideon had a very strange way of finding out what God wanted him to do. Because Gideon felt in his heart that God was calling him to do something very, very difficult. And so he said to God, well, God, if, if you want me to do this, to do something for me. And we're going to read a little bit of that this morning. We don't have the mystery box because I forgot it because it's one of those mornings. All right. Uh, so from Judges chapter 6, we're going to read a little bit from the book of Gideon. If you don't want to read, you just say amen or hallelujah. All right. You're going to read? Gideon said to God, if you will save Israel by my hand as you have promised. So if, if you're going to save Israel by my hand as you promised... What's he going to say? Then? Look, I will please a will. Wool? Wool. Fleece. Fleece on the threshing. threshing floor. That was very hard reading for a grade one. You did very well. A wool fleece. So, you know, the bit of the wool that's on the back of the sheep? You get a, a wool, a whole lot of wool that you've cut off the sheep. He says, I'm going to put it out on the floor, the threshing floor. That's where they go to, to do some work in the farm. If there is dew only on the fleece and all the ground is dry, then I will know that you will save Israel by my hand, as you said. Okay. Click. And that is what happened. Gideon rose early the next day. He squeezed the fleece and wrung out of the dew. A bowl full of water. Very good. So he got a sheep's wool skin and he put it out on the ground and he said, God, if the sheep's skin is wet and the ground is dry, I'll know that this is what you want me to do. And when he got up in the next morning, was the wool just a little bit wet? It was very, very, very wet and the ground was dry. And he squeezed the wool and out came a whole big bucket of water. God was saying, yes. Hey. Okay. 
Sometimes God whispers. Sometimes God shouts, yes! In this case, God was shouting, Gideon, yes, absolutely. But guess what? Gideon wasn't sure. So he said to God. Then Gideon said to God, do not be angry with me. Let me make just one more request. Very good. Allow me one more test with the fleece, but this time make the fleece dry and let the ground be covered with dew. Very good. Hallelujah. Allah. That night, God did so. Only the fleece was dry and all the ground was covered with dew. Dew, yes, with dew. All right, so he got... He tested it again. He said, you know what? Someone could have chucked a bucket of water on that wool. Someone could have snuck in here last night and put water on that wool and kept the ground dry. So I better check again. This time, God, I want the ground to be wet and the wool to be dry. You know what God said? Yes! The ground was very wet. The wool was very dry. It was impossible. It was a miracle. And by doing this, Gideon found out exactly what God wanted him to do. He had it encouraged to him. You know, you talk to some of the people here who've had amazing experiences with God, and God keeps showing up. He talks to us in all sorts of amazing and interesting ways. He talks through our hearts. He talks through his Holy Spirit. He talks through ideas coming into our mind. He talks through the Bible. He talks through the words of our brothers and sisters, and sometimes he talks through CO. Yeah, he does. Sometimes when CO talks, it's God talking. It's amazing. I've seen it happen. God talks. The question is, are we listening? Are we listening? So this morning, I would like everyone to get up and go and shake somebody by the hand and greet them. And the first person will say, God speaks. And the other person will say, you listen. All right, everyone go and find someone you haven't greeted yet this morning and do that. And then the kids will head out to All right. The kids have headed out to Sunday school. Greet somebody last time and then come and sit down because God is speaking. Well, he is, whether it's through me or not, it's another matter. I'm so used to getting prayed for when I come up here that I've forgotten what I pray. I better pray, hey? Father God, as I stand to speak to these people today, I pray that you would speak, that they would hear your voice and not mine. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. This morning I've got two questions for you. Two questions. Everybody show me two fingers. All right, two questions. Number one, do you know for certain that you have eternal life? That is, if you died right now, would you go to heaven? I'd like everybody to think about that for a second. Yes, no, maybe, not sure. Do you know for sure that you have eternal life? If you died right now, would you go to heaven? I'll leave you a few moments to think about that. Actually, while we're thinking about that, if you didn't get a copy of our notes as you came in, put your hand up so you can follow along and have a place to write down your answers to the questions. For this question, most people would say, no, or I'm not sure. You know, Christians can and should say, yes, absolutely. When I was in a Bible college, I went to a proper Bible college, Landon, none of this online nonsense, and you boys can put that phone away, thank you very much. Don't think I'm not watching you. Very good. Uh, I went to a proper Bible college, and as part of the Bible college, one day they took us all to the local mosque to learn about other religions. We got this wonderful tour of the beautiful Gallipoli Mosque in Auburn in Sydney. And the young lady who was showing us around showed us all the different parts of the mosque and told us all the significance of the things. And then at the end there was a time for questions. And there were questions about the building and about the traditions and different things that happened there. And finally someone said to the young lady, You're a very devout Muslim. Do you know for sure that when you die, Allah will take you into paradise? And this devout young Muslim woman said, no, 
No Muslim knows for sure if they're going to paradise when they die. No Muslim knows for sure because we're never sure if our good deeds are enough to please Allah. And all of us went, well, that's a big thing that's different about Christianity. The Christian faith is the difference, one of the differences between Christianity and every religion in the world is this word assurance. Everyone say assurance. Christians can and should know for certain that they have eternal life. That's question number one. I'm not going to ask you if you said yes or no or maybe. That's between you and God. Hopefully by the end of this message you'll be saying yes. Number two, suppose you were to die tonight and you stood before God in heaven and he asked why. Why should I let you into my heaven? What would you reply? There's a place on your page where you can write some ideas. What would you reply? Imagine the scene. You've been hit by a bus on your way home from church today. Uh, one of those new green buses that runs on batteries. No good to you, now you're dead, but anyway. And the next thing you know, you open your eyes and it's the judgment day and you're standing before God and God says, why should I let you into heaven? What would your answer be? Take a few moments to write down a, your answer. Why would you, what would you say? I should have thinking music. Again, if you write it down, no one will be looking at this. It's not a test. I won't be checking up on you after. But think of a definite answer. God says, why should I let you in? What would your answer be? This morning I want to say there are only two answers to this question. One is right and one is wrong. And so this morning I have two envelopes, the right one and the wrong one. Let's start with the wrong answer. What is the wrong answer? The wrong answer is anything that answers salvation by works. Salvation by works, or alternatively, what I have done. So if what you've written down on that page, or what you have in your mind, or what you thought of the answer to that question began with, because I, I'm sorry to tell you that's the wrong answer. Because I is the wrong answer. Because we can list our good works, you know, keeping the Ten Commandments, not killing people, not lying to people, not stealing, giving to charity, giving to the church, being a good citizen. I hope you all remembered to vote, those of you who are citizens. Too late now. Being a good citizen, bringing up my family the right way. I read my Bible, I pray, I go to church, I've been baptized, I take communion. All of these things are good things that cannot save us. These things cannot save us because Jesus says there's something wrong with us. In Mark chapter 7 and verse 20 to 23, Jesus says what comes out of a person is what defiles them, that is, makes them unclean. What comes out of a person is what defiles them. For it's from within, Jesus says, out of a person's heart that evil thoughts come, sexual immorality, theft, Murder, adultery, greed, malice, deceit, lewdness, envy, slander, arrogance, and folly. All these evils come from, with, from inside and defile a person. Jesus says that God's standard is 100% perfection. By this standard, we all fail. Because sin is not just doing or saying or even thinking wrong things. Jesus says it's within us. It's out of the heart. They come all the evil things that he lists. Imagine you go to the doctor and you've got red spots all over your body. You've got chicken pox or some other disease. And the doctor goes, all right, and pulls out a bunch of Band-Aids and sticks a bunch of Band-Aids, one over every spot, all over your body. And then says, that'll be $1,000. Thank you very much. You're cured. Has he fixed the problem? No, because the red spots are just a symptom of something that's going on deep inside. There is some kind of disease in the blood, and that disease needs to be dealt with in the blood, not just by covering it over with Band-Aids. The good works are the Band-Aids. They may make us look more presentable on the outside. They do not change what is going on 
inside. So that's the wrong answer. What is the right answer? The right answer is called salvation by grace. What do we mean by grace? Grace is an undeserved free gift. An undeserved free gift. And in this case, the undeserved free gift is what Christ has done. Not what I have done, but what Christ has done. We read in Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 8, For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. This is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God. You know, reflecting on this verse, John Wesley, after whom our church is named, he said this, All the blessings which God has given to humanity are acts of grace, abundance, kindness, his free, undeserved favor, Favor entirely undeserved. Humanity has no right to the smallest of God's mercies. It was free grace that formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. It was grace that stamped on the human soul the image of God and put all things under his feet. That same free grace continues to us to this day, life, and breath, and all good things. For there is nothing we are, or have, or do, which can earn the littlest reward from God's hand. All that we have accomplished, the prophet says, you have done for us. And all the things that we have accomplished are simply examples of free mercy. And whatever good that can be found in humanity is also the gift of God. What can a sinful person do to make right even the smallest of sins? Their own good deeds? No. No matter how many deeds or how holy these deeds are, they do not belong to the sinner. They are entirely God's work. And the truth is that all of our deeds are unholy and sinful. Every one of them is flawed and broken and needs to be fixed by God. Jesus said, only bad fruit grows on a bad tree. And the human heart is altogether bad and corrupt and falls short of the glory of God. We are so much less than God intended and designed us to be at the beginning. Therefore, having nothing, not rightness, not good works, Humanity must fall silent before God. But, but, but if sinful people find favor with God, it is grace on top of grace. If God agrees to pour more blessings upon us, even the greatest of all blessings, salvation, eternal life, What can we say to these things but thanks be to God for his indescribable gift? His gift is indescribable. In this gift, God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. And that's what Christ has done. Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He has all the power of God, his Father, here on earth. He came to show us what God is really like. And when we look at Jesus, we see God as he truly is. And Jesus died on the cross to take away the sin of the world, to deal with our heart problem, to deal with that disease that is inside every person. And Jesus rose from the dead as a guarantee of eternal life to all who believe who accept the grace of God by faith. For it is by grace you have been saved. Through faith. Grace is the source. Faith is the condition of salvation. I want to finish today with a simple prayer. It's a prayer that asks for three things. For forgiveness for faith, 
and for assurance, for forgiveness by acknowledging that we are not perfect, that we all sin, that we all need to be rescued, for faith, for courage to believe, to trust in who Jesus is and what he has done, for assurance, the certainty of eternal life. I'm going to read the prayer first. and Then I ask that we all pray it together. This is a prayer for people who have been followers of Jesus for decades and for new believers and for people who want to believe. For those on the back of your notes there, the prayer is written out in Kinyamalenge and also in Persian. So if you prefer to read it in your own language, it's there on the back of the notes. But let's look at this prayer together. It's in, the, it's in the main front section in English on the back in those other languages. The prayer says this, Father God, thank you for Jesus. Thank you for who he is. Thank you for what he has done. I am not as good as Jesus. There is sin in my life. Please forgive me. Help me to trust in Jesus. Increase my faith. Please give me your assurance of eternal life. Come into my life. Fill me with your peace. Thank you. Amen. If you'd like to, I invite everyone to pray that prayer with me now. Let's just read it together. If that's a prayer from your heart, then say, God, I really mean what I'm about to say. Let's pray. Father God, Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for who he is. Thank you for what he has done. I am not as good as Jesus. There is sin in my life. Please forgive me. Help me to trust in Jesus. Increase my faith. Please give me your assurance of eternal life. Come into my life. Fill me with your peace. Thank you. Amen. If you've never prayed a prayer like that before, I'd like to know about it, to encourage and support you. If you've got questions about these things, please come and ask them. If you'd like to know more, you can be part of a Christianity Explained course to find out more about Jesus, about who he is and what he's done, to learn about the amazing grace, the undeserved gift of eternal life that is ours. Through faith. The song I've chosen this morning, I've got the words there in Kinyamalenge. Hopefully I've translated that well. Not even going to attempt the Persian. It was helpful to us. God bless you. It was written there in the back of your notes if you'd like to read it in your own language. The song I've chosen this morning is a music hall song, if that makes sense. I'll sing the verse and then I'll invite you to join and sing the chorus. The chorus says, No more, no more. He remembers sins. No more. They're pardoned forever. He will never bring them up against me anymore. I'll hear no more of the evil days of yore, the old days. I'm a pardoned offender. and God will remember them no more. It's a Salvation Army song, so I'll trust that my mother-in-law will sing loudly from the back. It goes like this. Have we not known it? Have we not heard it? Power unto God belongs. Yet do we daily find in his mercy themes for the sweetest songs. Healing the wounded, raising the fallen, making the blind to see. Saying to all who seek his face, these precious words of redeeming grace. No more, no more, 
He remembers sins no more. They are pardoned forever, and he will never bring them up against me anymore. I'll hear no more of the evil days of yore. I'm a pardoned offender, and God will remember them no more. Joy bursts of singing, gaily a springing with every day that starts. If we were silent, then would the stones cry shame on our fainting hearts. Oh, banish sadness, sing now for gladness, glory in Christ the Lord. Who is a God like Unto thee, one who can pardon iniquity, that means sin, no more, no more. He remembers sins no more. They are pardoned forever, and he will never bring them up against me anymore. I'll hear no more of the evil days of yore. I'm a pardoned offender, and God will remember them no more. Safe in the dark days, safe in the bright days, safe till my latest breath. There is endurance. In this assurance, stronger than fear of death, when the accuser comes to the judgment, seeking my soul to claim, I have a token in the blood, I have the word of a pardoning God. Will you stand and sing? No more, no He remembers sins no more. And he will never bring them up against me anymore. I'll hear no more of the evil days of yore. I'm a pardoned offender, and God will remember them no more. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you that because of who Jesus is and what he has done, our sins can be taken away and we can live with you for all eternity. Father God, I pray this morning that if there's anyone who can hear my voice, doesn't know the Lord Jesus in a real and a personal way, who doesn't know that assurance of life everlasting, who doesn't know what it means to trust in your grace. Father God, come right now by your Holy Spirit. Speak to that person. Convince them. Rebuke them. Draw them closer to you. Father God, for the rest of us who've been walking on this path and trusting in you, Father, help us to trust in the completed work of Christ, and not our own good deeds. Father God, we thank you that we are pardoned offenders and you will remember our sins no more. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I invite the worship group to come. Stay standing and we'll get ready to sing our final song. If you'd like to speak to me about the things we've talked about this morning, please make a time. I'd love to spend time with you and share with you about Jesus and who he is and what he's done. Harriet's going to lead our final song which I think says pretty much the same things that we